Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84. A big thank you for coming back and joining me on another video right here on YouTube. We are currently smack bang in the middle of the Paris FC rebuild series. We have gone out to the French capital. We have taken the charge at the city second team, Paris FC. We are in the dugout. We are trying to influence the team and push them forwards to come out of the shadow of PSG. We are going to do it trying to use the children of the French Revolution, which is going to make it even more difficult because it means no players will be joining the club of the age of 21 or above. So any players that have come in are 21 or under. So we are basically picking up players from Monaco, players from Lyon, players from Lille, Nice, Saint-Étienne, and a few other of the top French teams as we look to just feed off the scraps of the kids that they aren't retaining or that were the ones that are cheap enough that we can buy and we are trying to rebuild across five seasons Paris FC so if you've been on the channel yesterday you would have seen we went through the winter uh, transfer window we did not spend a lot of money about four million pounds I think on two players we also sold a player going out and that was the episode that was leading us to the end of the current season and that is the 22-23 season so we have jumped forwards to the 1st of June 2023 and let's show you what has happened in Liga 1. There is a little spoiler on the screen already you can see where we have finished and we have finished our first season back in Liga 1 in 10th place so yesterday at the turn we were in 11th we have moved up one slot we have a win-loss record in the first season back in the top flight of 38 played, 15 won, 7 drawn, 16 lost, a zero goal difference. So this is going to be one, this will be a tough nut to crack because both scoring and defending obviously need improving. How we go about it when we can only sign selected players is going to be a difficult one, but we are going to have a good go at that. Before we break down in depth the Liga Uber Eats campaign, we also played in the friendly cup, which we won, but that's not important. No matter how many people try and tell you a friendly is important, it absolutely is not. Uh, cup de France, knocked out in the ninth round by Nice, same as yesterday. So no progress there, nothing won on the season. But finishing in 10th place in the first season, back in Liga 1, feels like a small win, I will concede. Before we break it down then, let's go and have a look at the finances tab. And you can see for next season... We have an overall balance of £3.4 million. We have a transfer budget of £7.4 million. Now, I'm not too sure how we're going to go about this. We could either go and try and buy a lot of players for small amounts of money or just try and go and spend the £7 million on a single player. Uh, let me know in the comments section down below what you would do if you had the £7 million. Take in or bear in mind the size of the club. Take into consideration the fact that we aren't going to be attracting the wonder kids and the best of the best. So would you go out and buy, say, two or three solid players or just go and spend the money on a one player? Let me know in the comments section below. Uh, onto the wage budget then, 192000 available, 135000 is being spent. So we are well within the wage budget. Looking at the club vision then, across the season, we are very secure. Uh, the board give us a B plus for our first season back in Liga 1 and they are delighted with our leadership of the team. Um, Let's go through the club culture and the club vision page then quickly. So develop players using the club's youth system. We are on track. They are delighted with that. Play counter-attacking football. They are pleased with that. Sign players from the lower levels of the domestic game. Now, this is a clause that goes into most of these rebuilds and drives me absolutely crazy. There are not many players who are playing in the division below that are good enough to play in the top flight. And that is the reason why the teams get relegated into the division because they aren't good enough in the first place maybe we can go and cherry pick some of the players from the relegated teams but i really doubt that we're going to be hitting this target it just seems so silly for them to want to now focus on players from the lower levels of the game when really we could be pushing on and trying to kick on and go and achieve a lot more than just uh yeah trying to sign players from league two so then they wanted us to play entertaining football we are not really being judged on that reserving judgment there i think we do play entertaining football like i said we had a zero goal difference so you're pretty much guaranteed you're either going to get like a 2-2 draw and a nil nil draw because we evened ourselves out all the way across the season so nothing really to report 
there. Uh, work within the wage budget, on course, we have just shown you we've got a massive gap in that, so we are fine. Sign players to sell for a profit, they are reserving judgment for that. Minimum two year contracts now for first team players. Again, like two years really isn't enough. I like to try and get my players on at least a three year deal. It stops you having to just renew contract after contract after contract, season after season. So it's a good thing to try and get them on along there. Going forwards, then they want us to fight bravely against relegation. We've achieved that this season. We need to continue and try and kick on somewhat in next season. And then they want to just continue to remain in Liga 1 until the end of that five-year plan. So quite a realistic board. I'm glad that they're not doing anything too crazy or too drastic because that would just be absolutely silly. Right then, uh, let's have a little look at the schedule. Before we do that, yesterday I think I actually forgot to go and cover this. So uh, in the build-up, you can pretty much catch up with a lot of what we had here. I think in the episode before, we played down to Reem. So we're just going to rattle a few of these off, some of the bigger highlights. So Claremont 3-0, lost to St. Etienne 3-0 in a poor game, but then beat Strasbourg 4-0, Toulouse 4-3, Montpellier 3-2 and Brest 4-1. We then got beat Point Nice and Monaco. Uh, we drew with Rennes at 3-3. We then play in the silly uh, friendly invitational cup thing because of the World Cup in real life in 2022 being the Winter World Cup. So Players go away and then they come back into that tournament. Uh, we beat Troyes 2-0, 9-3-3. There was a 3-0 loss to Nice in the Coupe de France ninth round. We then had a good run, or we had a good win, sorry, against Metz before a poor run, where we lost 2-1 to PSG, 3-0 to Lille, no, Lyon, 3-2 uh, to Lille. We then beat Reim 4-1, Lorient 2-1 and Clermont 2-0 before going on into the second half of the season, a little bit patchy with a 4-2 loss to Bordeaux, a 1-0 loss to Saint-Étienne, a 5-1 victory against Strasbourg, a 1-1 draw against Toulouse, 3-2, no, 2-2 draw against Montpellier, a 1-0 win against Brest, a 3-4 defeat against Nice, 2-1 win against Rennes, a 3-1 loss to Monaco, a 2-1 uh, victory at Troyes. And then the last four games of the season, our form just absolutely dive bomb. We could have finished so much higher up the table if we would have just got a few more points out of these last four games. But we got turned over 5-2 by Nantes. We got a 1-1 draw out of Metz. We then got turned over 5-2 again by PSG before losing 3-0 on the final day of the season to Marseille. So some decent form there across the season. Apologies for missing it on yesterday's episode. Didn't keep you up to date with what was going on, but that is a quick run through of getting up to Christmas and then past Christmas and beyond. If we go back to the competitions tab then and go back into the league, and we now can show you again there is the league table. Uh, so played 38, won 15, drew 7, lost 16, zero goal difference of 52 points. First season back, I think that is a pretty good tally. Let's look at some player stats then. So Andy Delors led the way with goals for the division. 30 goals for Nice. That is impressive. Uh, Dembele, 26. Cadwell, 22. Milik, 22. And no players for us on the list. Most assists. Suso led the way with 14. Brahimi with 13. Mendes with 13. And there is no player for us there. Most shots. Andy Delors, top of the scoring list. Top of the charts for shots as well. 158 shots. Laborde, Milik, Dembele, Boadou, Mooney, Cadware, and Healy rounding that metric out. Most player of the match awards went to Neymar with 9, Delo also getting 9, Dembele 8, Laborde 7, Holland 5, and a few others below. Most tackles won went to Lenny Pinter. This is a real strange one. He obviously can play as a wing back, but I've been playing him as an out and out winger or an inverted winger, cutting in off of either side. But to have 88 tackles, one from 36 appearances, he has top the list there. Florent Henning also uh, with 78 from 34 appearances, a creditable sixth. Most dribbles made went to Jeremy Doku, no uh, surprise there really. Although Frank Honorak being just behind him is a little bit of a surprise. Our top dribbler was Lenny Pinto with 87. Most clean sheets went to Donnarumma, fewest conceded went to Donnarumma, so yeah. PSG there, obviously dominating in terms of at least goals conceded. Looking at some of the other stats then, team conceded the bottom left. We then had distance covered per 90 minutes for Hadjam, 15.95 kilometres. Top yellow cards, we stupidly had 16 for Bernauer, 
14 for Ugachuku and uh, NDE getting four mistakes leading to a goal. So the quicker we can get rid of him, probably the better. I think he will be gone by the summer. So then that is Liga Un wrapped up. The last thing to do is have a look at the squad as always. So we've got Bajic in goal, Hadjam, Nadi, Bamba, Bernauer. We've got Dekiti, Jabi, Ugachupu. We've got Tell on the left, Tremoni on the right. And we have Laura up top. So open to improvements. We've got two and a half stars in there. We've got some three star players. Uh, lots of room for improvement. Diakiti's position is one that we will be looking at going into the new season. Hopefully going to strengthen because even though there's not a lot of money in the coffers, I think we need to go out and send, uh, spend money on two or three players rather than going and putting it all on one player. But a brilliant, valiant first effort back in Liga Un. To finish 10th in the league is such an achievement and I think we can now absolutely kick on from here. Speaking of kicking on, if you're at this point of the video and you're still watching, firstly, a big thank you for following the content. Uh, if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, please consider doing so. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date with everything going on, not only in this save, but everything else that goes on on the channel too. I uh, really do appreciate everybody who takes the time to come by the channel, leave a little comment or a like or a subscribe, and it really does help to get these videos out to so many more people. But for this one, I am going to be wrapping it up here. If you can go and check out another video on the channel, that would be fantastic. But if not, I'll catch you on the next one. I'll see you soon.